second. All right. I think everyone got the notification that the recording has started. Right, so again from my side, good morning and welcome to our third seminar in the Elinet um, network. And this is actually our second seminar in the GE teaching series. And today we have our speaker, um, Dr. Fan Fang with us, and he is going to be talking to us about global English's GE and teacher education. And he's going to be sharing um, some of his insight with all of us and you will be able to, like I said, ask questions at the end. Now, just before I allow him uh, hosting rights to share his screen, I want to remind you, if you are not yet a member of Elinet, please do feel free to sign up. You will be able to find the network um, in the address that I think is showing on your screen. Or if you want to just get some more information, please email us at connect at elinet.org.uk. We currently also have some coordinator positions open. These are all volunteer positions, but if you're interested in contributing to the network in one way or another, please feel free to reach out. And more specifically, if you would like to conduct a, a seminar, then please reach out. We're always happy to receive more input and interest from um, people who are not yet on the list. So then without further ado, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to hand over. Um, thank you again for joining us, Fan, and then the floor is yours. Um, thank you very much, Nadia, for your very kind um, introduction. And thank you very much for um, Elinet's um, invitation. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to um, share with you um, some of my like um, humble kind of understanding of um, global Englishes and um, teacher education. Okay, I'm, I'm now in like late afternoon and for those of you, yeah, um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, it just happens when I check the, um, the schedule of this talk, I, I didn't realize that today is the um, Dragon Boat Festival in China. Okay, so it's like a special holiday here in China anyway. Um, global Englishes and teacher education, I think it's a, it's a very key topic um, for, for research. I'll first start with a quote by um, Kurt Kuhn, Professor Kurt Kuhn. So here the crucial question might not be what comes after teacher training, rather what does it involve in terms of both content and procedure, all right? So I think my voice should be fine, right? Okay, let me just, is it too too low or I just need to double check with the, the audience? No, I it's perfect. Is, okay, okay, great. So this is actually um, email correspondence and here um, Professor Kuhn also mentioned that quite often enthusiastic and seemingly highly engaged participants ask for trial courses on the um, the Moodle platform, and I think um, Professor Kuhn also um, was doing um, the the My English projects um, at his university, and also with the participants and teacher train um, like teacher trainees. He is also doing some um, teacher training. But here, uh, based on the email correspondence, he mentions that none of these cases anything ever happened afterwards. So once back home, they were swallowed up by their ordinary workload and work routine. Something very similar that I experienced as well, that we try to offer um, whatever, both teachers and students, some training programs and teachers said, okay, we felt very interesting. So Global English opens another door for us that we understand um, the, those critical aspects to understand how we challenge, for example, native speakerism and um, respect multilingualism, for example, that we need to provide students with various opportunities to, for example, get exposed, uh, get exposed to diversify different accents and how we define mistakes, for example. But here, um, after this training, right, teachers, when they go back to their ordinary um, teaching back in classroom, most 
quite often the, the teachers they, they go back they need to follow very strict like um, curricula um, assessments etc so I don't know whether it's positive or negative so I think it's, it's good that for us we need to continue to research um, global English is teacher education. So I think I'll just first start with the, the background. I'm not going to introduce what Global English is, is, although very briefly, I think every one of us already um, know this concept. Um, and, and he addressed linked to teacher education with the um, opportunities and challenges. Um, I'll just link a bit to the um, future direction of um, equitable multilingual education with um, some of this um, proposal that's um, based on a uh, thematic review that um, me and my students published. So I think here, you, if, you are, if you're interested in, uh, you can refer to that thematic re review afterwards. Okay, so this um, Global English is paradigm is based on um, Galloway, right? Nicola Galloway on um, her book. That's um, World English is ELF, E-I-L, and Translanguaging. Um, although like um, we still need to um, discuss whether translanguaging should be part of global English's paradigm, but this is another story that we need to, to, to um, research further. And it's not the focus of the talk. Um, here, Jenkins also mentions the um, shift or the paradigm shift when we talk about global Englishes in terms of teaching. And we also need to see the current um, sociolinguistic aspect, this um, sociolinguistic aspect. And also we need to understand the function of English, um, a shift from monolingual framework to multilingual and multicultural framework and theories of English use. Okay, actually this also gives to another dilemma whether the teachers, okay, if, if they incorporate, for example, the mother tongue, if they incorporate other languages in their teaching, students may also feel that um, the students may also challenge the teachers that this is maybe the, the, the lack of language proficiency, for example. So this is, again, not an easy task for both teachers and students if we say, okay, how we incorporate multilingualism into language teaching, okay? I'm going to skip those bit. I think, yeah, we, we're all familiar with those um, aspects, but something um, I feel that change English teacher hiring practices, there is still a long way to go um, that if we, if we understand, right, those um, some key elements, at, at least um, in many, um, how, how do I say, um, Asian context and at least based on my experience and my knowledge, um, there is still a preference, right, of this um, teacher, this hiring practices. But anyway, at least here, based in, in my, on my experience, there is um, more challenges for teachers because they need to enter this um, academia it's not about how qualified the teacher is in terms of teaching. Now the requirement is how well teachers can research and publish their papers into this um, esteemed journals and to keep the job. So I think this is another story of this, of, of teaching. Even, yeah, if you are non-native, if we just use the term of non-native um, language teachers and you are very good at publishing papers, if you're very good at researching, something also can be possible if you, if you are like um, enter this job markets um, as language teachers. Um, so I think this is, again, um, more challenge for teachers. It's not only like whether um, you can teach English very well, but now the market um, goes to another direction is how well you can publish, okay? Um, again, like um, a Thai scholar, I don't know if I can pronounce his name, um, Prab Jandi, okay? So the diversity and complexity of the sociolinguistic reality of English leads to the need of instructional reform to prepare students 
for the reality of English use outside classroom. Okay. Um, again, I, I, I'm doing another project and I just interviewed some students. They all realize, right, when they learn English, they should use English outside classroom settings. But they also reported um, that it's also very, um, I don't know, difficult for them because they still need to go through, okay, this the journey of applying for postgraduate study, um, the journey of passing this English um, tests in China in order to, um, you know, to, 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 to look for a better job. So on the one hand, right, we realize that English should be learned, English should be taught to, to suit this reality of language use. But on the other hand, students, they need to go through this, um, the, the, the journey. So some students also feel that it's, it's very difficult. They, they don't even know, okay. Um, they also find it by this conflict for them. All right. Um, so traditional teacher education programs, to go to the teacher's perspective, have largely neglected the importance of incorporating global Englishes into language teaching, and they have not supported GE-informed teacher education programs. So I found a, an example of um, this theory and methodology for TISL. You you see, this is like um, a program, okay. Oops, it's too quick. Okay, um, this is a, um, a TISO program. And I don't know, we see this is still very, very um, language based and very, very like language oriented. For example, how we teach the skills, how we right, teach grammar, lesson plan, classroom management, I don't know, test assessment in the ESL classroom. Anyway, but global English is just not something being made explicit here. Um, the European toolkit for schools, um, maybe something more positive. If we see here, um, that's the several areas for which teachers say they have moderate or high need for this continuing professional development. Um, one aspect is uh, teaching and multilingual, multicultural settings. And again, some of the most effective ways to implement CPD that also enhance collaborative cultures in schools, um, the setting aside time and space for collective reflection and inquiry among teachers on ways to solve current problems, improve learning, strengthen the school climate and exchange observations and experience and views. Um, at least I think global Englishes can have a position here when we um, promote right, collaborative learning. And of course we need more observation. We need more like firsthand data to understand whether those um, CPD incorporate um, the, the aspects or the elements of global Englishes. But here I think there is a need right, that GE should be given a position here. Um, CELTA at least, right, incorporate this language analysis and awareness um, with the topic here, um, still uh, a bit like um, the basic linguistic knowledge, but some elements, okay, include here varieties of English, multilingualism and the road of first languages, right? Something, yeah, we, we see global Englishes or we see translanguaging um, that has been incorporated, right? Into um, teacher training. But here at least for CELTA, right? In many Asian contexts, the teachers don't know what CELTA really is and they don't need to go through this procedure right before obtaining the certificate anyway, okay? <clears throat> um, so TISO, the um, official, right, um, the, 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 the TISO um, International Association. Um, so here, 
who would perform the teaching bit, right? When we say teaching English to speakers of other languages, so the teachers, whether right, native speakers, English native English speaking teachers, if we still use the terms, right, but who perform the teaching, right? Um, <clears throat> that goes to language policy and the students' needs, even the parents' needs. Um, I. I don't know whether this is very suitable and appropriate. I, I just feel that um, to a large extent that teachers are sandwiched when performing teaching. And in the middle, I think teachers, they don't really have this agency or the priority, something the teachers were told, right? What should be taught and what should be assessed to the students, especially in many, um, Asian contexts, uh, many teachers are doing this co-teaching that they have to design the, um, the syllabus um, and also the teaching materials and even the final exam papers collaboratively. They do do it together. So it's, it's a bit difficult for teachers if they have this um, initiative or whatever the, the, the um, the agency or priority to mm, into that teaching because okay they need to go through this this procedure yeah the policy and here the students so the three barriers if I would say that teacher believes um, teacher education and also based on some of my studies and, and and research even teachers have the beliefs of GE incorporating GE. And even teachers, they go through this um, education, the, the, the CPD um, in the in-service teaching, right? I also feel that many universities and teachers really lack support, right? And they, of this, this kind of global Englishes and the training. So gradually teachers feel that mm, it's, it's difficult, it's tough for them to incorporate. Okay, so if, um, I don't know the theoretical bits, the teacher believes if we just make like cognition, yeah? Knowledge, beliefs, conceptions, and attitudes based on um, Professor Bork's um, um, research elaboration. It's about, so first, at a, on the first stage, we need to research, we need to understand what teachers think, know, and believe and the relationships of the mental constructs, right? And um, teachers' beliefs are usually shaped by their prior experiences, especially those related to their own learning experiences. Um, I don't know, because I also found that teachers who have overseas experience when they have the experience communicating with people from various lingua cultural backgrounds may be more tolerant to global Englishes, to this idea, and they develop this, the, the condis aspect of teacher beliefs. So it seems, right, based on, I don't know, so the, uh, my experience, they, they, they are, like, G is more acceptable. But for those teachers who based in China, or I don't know, based in the, their home countries, when they, at least in many Asian contexts, when they don't have this first hand, really overseas experience or communicating with people from various backgrounds, um, they are less tolerant to the concept and they still, they, they would go to the very fixed, right? Native oriented, standard correctness aspects. Yeah, I don't know whether it's true, but based on my experience and observation, I, I found something, yeah. So teacher education, um, the programs, right? We know, yes, primary, secondary, tertiary levels, both pre and in-service teacher education. Um, GLT, yeah, in teacher education to prepare teachers to be elf-aware transformative perspectives, EIL, teacher education, 
education. Yeah, scholars are researching um, GLT in teacher education. Um, and we all understand the yeah, GLT would challenge the, the, the fixed native oriented approach in teaching methods, curriculum designs and assessment, but at least in China, in the Chinese context, at least, um, I haven't found any GELT teacher education or global English's teacher education. Yeah, at least. Um, very little if we if we look at the whole teacher education program even very little um, even no position of one chapter or the very single elements if we put global english's teacher education into the whole program let alone single program simply based on GELT right so the third aspect, teacher support and teacher training, um, institutional support, policy, curriculum reform, right? Um, so here, uh, I think it's very common that there's conflictive attitudes towards implementing GE in teachers' own teaching context. So just now I mentioned that teachers were sandwiched. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to change this top-down language policy. And students at the end, they need to go through the tests, whatever local tests, international tests, to continue to apply for further education, right? Um, yeah, I, I told students, yeah, based on this study, as I okay, in the future, if you have opportunities, if you can be exposed, right? If you have opportunities to communicate with more people, uh, and then you don't need to go through this formal education, this procedure, you may develop this awareness of global English. And for teachers as well, if they don't need to teach students how they teach students to prepare for those local international exams strictly, okay? Teachers, they have this awareness. Many teachers, they have this awareness of GE although can be superficial. Um, they also told me that I still need to teach students, right, to go through those procedures. So here the, the conflictive attitudes, yeah, both teachers and students. Um, here the central concerns, yeah, is uh, how to deal with um, the other stakeholders, including parents and policymakers, yeah. Um, institutional support for training, right. Um, so some of my own data that I also interviewed um, the teachers on um, GE teacher education. Um, one, the teachers mentioned, yeah, um, I played a difficult accent when I played a difficult accent. Um, my students would ask me to play an easier one next time. Students don't want to be exposed to easier accents, even uh, I then asked me to play a more challenging one. So yeah, I then look for some strange accents for my students. So students really, they have different needs. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with um, CET4, CET6, or TEM4, TEM6 in China. So CET stands for College English Tests, okay? And those were for non-English major students, they need to pass CET4, they have to obtain this, this a score when they look for a job. Now they just, um, there is no a part, no passing score, but um, some companies, they have this minimum score for students when they look for a job. Okay, and TEM4 and TEM8, TEM stands for tests for English major, right? Um, more challenging. Um, now, at least, based on the listening recording, because I, I have the experience in vigilating those um, the, 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 the tests, you play twice, for example, first time British accent, or maybe first time American accent, and it's very like GA, and the second time is more British accents, like adopted, yeah, uh, a, a British accent. Very, very strictly discussed. So students say they say, oh, I don't want this other accents, right? And easier for them, it's British American with certain 
speeds that they are used to. Okay, and in the real life, nobody, at least very few people, would communicate in that way based on their listening materials. Okay, um, another teacher said, I, I found that if students are willing to be exposed to different accents, I can look for accents for them. They discuss how they feel about being exposed to different accents themselves. So we see here, the teacher, um, they, they try to, right, incorporate those um, elements. Um, another one, I only ask my students to compare the difference of British American English, even as they com comparative linguistics, a course, at least, right, many uh, universities offer this course, comparative linguistics, they just compare what compare GA and RP and local Mandarin. Okay, very, very, mm, I don't know, at least for me, it's, it's, it's very like a, a bit narrow minded or it's a bit narrow aspect. Um, <clears throat> Another, another teacher, so I met a teacher from South Africa who had a strong accent when I was in New Zealand. So this teacher had the previous, okay, study abroad experience. I could hardly get what he meant. After a semester, I participated in different activities and met different people. I was invited to have dinner with them. I was then exposed to various accent diversity. So back to my own teaching in China, I encouraged my students to be confident to their own accents and to express themselves. Um, so here, I just mentioned the teachers themselves, the teachers who have this overseas experience, um, maybe more open-minded, that they encourage students, right, to, to express in a more um, flexible manner. So the gap here, um, at least in many, many contexts, is that native ideology, um, I don't know whether it's good to put the expanding circle settings, we, we know it's still very dynamic. We can't just put like expanding circle settings, but in many settings, even English is not used dominantly, okay, in society. Still is, English is taught as a subject. It's still very difficult, right? If we, if we understand that teacher, uh, global English is language teaching. <clears throat> and also job advertisements as well. Um, that's based on um, Louis and I can't pronounce, sorry. So the recruiters will reject this application that doesn't say English native speaker on it yet. <clears throat> so the policy as well, that's, again, I, if I just share the experience itself, so, um, the teachers, we if we, are uh, required to teach EMI course, okay? And we seem to have this observer, the kind of um, the teaching, kind of um, this is a requirement. We have this quality insurance something. So sometimes uh, people with more teaching experience, okay? They will observe this class. So I think it was about, 10 years ago when I was observed. Yeah, so my teaching was supposed, at least, right, supposed, uh, if I put quotation marks, uh, supposed to be English only. Um, and then I just, I think in that class, I explained the concepts yeah, in Mandarin or whatever. And then I just switched to English because I was teaching in a more flexible way. But when the observer was sitting there, I say that he or she may have certain requirements on my language use as well. So I, I was very cautious about this. But anyway, I explained the concepts in Mandarin. And after um, the observation, when I had a conversation or when I just exchanged feedback, right, the, 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 the feedback, um, that's um, observer, more experienced, of course, so she mentioned, okay, Gabriel, you just used Chinese in your teaching. You are, you are supposed to use English only. How could you use Chinese? So you need to avoid using Chinese anyway. So, so that's my experience. And now um, I think I have um, more flexibility because now I've been teaching in my university with, for quite a while, for many young so-called, uh, the, the, the in-service young novice teachers, yeah, they have to experience this and need to go through um, the certain 
experience being observed, being challenged, or whatever it is, is, is a bit difficult for them, right? That they have to stick if they are st teaching English, and let alone whether this global English is. is. So this might it happens to me. Yeah. Um, so TISO also the association and the people are aware of this, right? Against discrimination of non-native speakers of English in the fields of TISO. Um, but we also found, for example, this um advertisements. Yeah. Um, we, we see here is an advertisement in Thailand. Do I make a yeah, so this private lesson, the pay is different, right? So native speakers, native get paid this this part, European, okay, Asian, all right. So it's, it's just, I don't know, very interesting. Um, again, it also happens, right? That at least you get a job to teach English, but you get different payments, right? Um, sometimes you, you don't have this opportunity. That's why this labor for Chinese teaching in China, for, for, for example, for Thai, uh, for Asian teaching, I don't, I don't know, it's, it's a bit um, complicated here. So um, if you're interested in, um, um, Dr. Dovchin also used a term linguistic racism there. Um, so how do we promote language and equality, right? For example, in teacher recruitment in language teaching. Um, Penny Cook also mentions that English is connected to social and economic inequalities both within and between countries. So English may indeed be fragmented, struggle over, resisted, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, also, the spread of English as a global language and the ever growing use and sophistication of information and communication technologies have changed the nature, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so my proposal, I don't know, that's, um, I try to put this a macro level, meso level and micro level. So meso level, if we put global English as teacher training, um, the policy level and also assessment flexibility. The meso level, I put institutional support and curriculum reform, while the micro level teacher cognition for classroom practice, teachers knowledge, beliefs, conceptions, and attitudes. I put those two arrows because I see the process dynamic, right? It's not only one way, it's, it's, it should be go, so dy uh, going like dynamic um, way. Um, but I don't know, like now, mm, at least I see some classroom practices at the micro level. Um, in the future, we, we need to see if there are more, more supports and more research to look at meso level and even macro level to see the possibilities, to see the, um, um, the future for um, global English language teaching. Okay. So I'm going to share with you very briefly some cases of elf aware teacher education. I'm not going to read everything yet. So the first case was um, in Turkey. Yeah, so Beirut and Sefakis, they um, designed this teacher education model into three phases, theory, applications, and evaluation. And so they also conducted um, teacher training, the theory building, application, evaluation to enhance teachers' awareness of global Englishes. At least, uh, this one at least is ELF, yeah. Um, the second one's here on this transformative teacher education model. Um, yeah. I think this one is also based in um, Turkey. Then, then they found the barriers, again, exam culture, resistance from parents. That's why I see this, mm, the levels macro, meso or micro is, is more dynamic, right? 
the exam culture can be more top down, can be more macro level, but even resistance from parents as well can be more uh, micro level. Yeah. The, the third case, again, um, this is a volume edited by Aya Matsuda. Um, I found this one um, by Hino, uh, a, a, a case in Japan. So it's very similar to the, the first one. Again, theory, application, and also evaluation. So it provides teachers ability to recognize the interactive and dynamic nature. But again, the terms are, are used in very quite different. Like this one is on EIL, English as International Language. Um, at least, right, we see the theory, application, evaluation, procedure, the format is quite popular. So it's another case using theory, application, evaluation. This one was in Brazil, right? So, so here enabled both the student teachers and teacher educators to reflect on and improve their pedagogical practice. Uh, another edited volume, yeah, by um, Ali Frat Salvi and um, Bergerin Yazam. This one was published very, uh, I think, last year or something, uh, 2021, yeah. Um, again, using theory application evaluation. Uh, this one is um, the Chinese teachers. Yeah, the group of rural Chinese teachers went to Canada, um, a Canadian university for teacher training. So at least we see the formats. Now the proposal is based on theory to understand the theoretical level of global Englishes, then how they apply and evaluation. So again, there's five cases, if I'm not, I'm not going to expand five cases here, but we see the teacher education programs and teacher trainings, still it's on a more like a trial manner. It's, it's not happens in real um, contexts, right? Um, so if we, if we link to the, the first slides by Professor um, Quirt, right, Quirt, Quirt, that those teachers, when they start their teaching career, how much flexibility, right? How, how, how much leeway do they have that they really can incorporate global English into teaching, into their own classroom, right? In reality, that, that's the case. That's the, we, we, we already see many, many cases of teacher training, right? I, I was trying um, when I was writing the thematic review with, with my student, right? I was trying to look at a case in China and I could not find this case. Even the Chinese teachers, they went to um, a Canadian university for teacher training. And it's not, not that popular in Asia, at least. So a quick look of the, this summary is that we found some challenges as well. That's the ideology of native speakerism in language education, um, the uh, paucity of um, relevant materials and available curricula. That's why I put this muscle level. It's, it's difficult for them, for, for the uh, for the in service, especially for novice teachers. That um, a need for bottom up voices regarding teachers' own cognitive development their willingness and challenges of implementing global Englishes or elf informed pedagogy before, during and after teacher training programs in various contexts. And I think it's more difficult, right, um, to, to realize this after. Um, again, I don't know if I just have this idea yeah, that whether it's possible to conduct this um, ethnographic research to look at a kind of the teachers, right? The cohort of teachers before the teacher training, during the teacher training, and then after the teacher training, how and whether they change their, their beliefs, their cognitive level, and also how they, if they turn this um, awareness or the training right into their own teaching context. So something, I, I, I don't know, uh, I haven't really read any uh, study if we do this from a more ethnographic or a longitudinal um, research, right? Before, during, after. And then I think that can, to some extent, answer the question 
uh, or the concern raised by um, Professor Kuan, Kuan right? That whether uh, that is after the teacher training, what teachers can do, yeah? Whether this is the end of the training, the end of the story, or whether they can be extended into their own teaching context, okay? So the gap between theory and practice cannot be ignored when student teachers teach their lessons, right? So we designed, for example, the five cases, yeah? So theory level, application level, and the evaluation level. So that the whole process was still on the, the teacher training experience, right? It's not really theory and uh, what is the second application, right? They, they don't really apply it in go back to their own classroom, right? It's still during the process. So they are still teaching whatever, uh, this kind of mock lessons as well. It's not really the real classroom context teaching. Um, here the implication. So I was just thinking about whether longitudinal study can be possible to look at this, yeah, the, 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 the whole process. So the, 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 complete, the complete completion of the of teacher training is not the end point, right? Yeah. So they had the adequate exposure of students to G related concepts and issues should be ensured for an health aware where my sets, yeah. I think it's to a large extent it's already there. Teachers should be equipped with strategies to raise G awareness of other stakeholders to reduce stress due to the native speakerism imposed on them. And again, it's not an easy task for teachers. So I just mentioned that teachers are sandwiched in the middle. So how can teachers, for example, they can suggest this to parents, to students. I think students may be aware of this. Yeah, they feel less stressed. Okay, they, and they, 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 they may feel that, okay, more confident when they use English to communicate with people. But on the other hand, the policymakers, how they evaluate teaching, okay? And also the parents, how they feel that this, the teachers really teach so-called standard English to my kids, to the students as well. So again, it's a, it's a bit challenging, but we understand this. Um, localized textbooks should serve as appropriate teaching resources for teacher empowerment. That's something I said, how you empower, how global English is really empower um, local teachers right, to, to, to teach, that's something. Um, and collaborate action between teachers and students um, is needed. So three stages of health aware teacher education. Um, I think this is a chapter. Uh-huh, anyway. So this is proposed by um, Seth Arcus. I'm going to share with you a teacher education from a critical perspective. So here, the first is promoting teachers to engage actively with issues relevant to language use and language learning, exploring the complexities of English medium communication in relation to learners' experience in using ELF, right? But complexity, this is a key word and how complexity, how complex this complex. This is another story. Yeah? Now I think EMI is simplified to be as using English as the medium of communication, English only whatsoever it is, right? Um, anyway, yeah. So the second phase is analyzing dilemmas of communication on their instructional practice and their overall perceptions anyway. So this one, I think it's also we need to look at the cognitive level, the emotional level of using English. Yeah, regardless of EMI or English, at least, I think the emotional uh, level aspect of communication should also be emphasized. Um, engaging teachers in the development, implementation and the evaluation of action plan. Right. Some reflection for teachers as well. Yeah. What is linguistic error? What criteria? Okay. Um, my educational background, my teaching context, my social environment, and the dominant ELT ideologies. 
da, 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 da. I think for teacher training, we can do this. We can we can do a lot on teacher training. But mm, at, at least based on my students, when I was discussing with my students, right, language, linguistic error, global English is language and society during the car, during the course, during the class, they say, yes, they raise this awareness. Um, but I interviewed them very recently, I think, yeah, last week. They also mentioned, they also told me that um, they also found a dilemma. That what do I really learn English for? <laughs> that how, what type of English should I use? And some students, they, they, they still said, uh, I was not really confident when using English. Even I understand global English is the social aspect. I still feel I will be judged yet when I use English. Anyway, this complexity of this. So again, the critical pedagogy in teacher education can be something. Yeah, um, Kogo and Nenax, uh, we also wrote a um, piece of research published in ILA Review on the um, developing elf research for critical language education. So the future directions, I put three aspects. One is looking inward for us, for teachers, right? We should learn to foreground the prior beliefs through self-reflection, regardless if the teachers have this overseas experience or communicating with people from different lingua cultures. Um, self-reflection, teacher engagement, sharing with teaching choices and beliefs, etc. In this way, teachers can share the teaching beliefs among them. Yeah, this themselves. Yeah, what do I think? What do I really teach English for? What do I really believe that students can benefit from what the language or what type of English they should learn? More communication, yeah. I think teacher communication is also important. Yeah, not only that like teachers and students, but from teachers themselves, even not within this proper teacher training. Yeah, you can think teachers can just chat during lunch or during any party, for example. They can just think about this. Uh, maybe not in parties, which we need to have fun in parties. Maybe some, um, any, I don't know, uh, lectures or or whatever it is. Okay, looking around. So again, um, teachers should stay informed about the sociolinguistic landscape. When they step out of the classroom, in many aspects, they need to realize, even in this local context, right? Even in their own teaching context, if I say based on Shantou, where I am now located when I'm based in, even you go to the province, even we go to go traveling within the country, we also need to see this com complex sociolinguistic, the social language uh, aspect, how, how language is used. When even within the country, where English is not used dominantly, when they can step out, right? They communicate with people. We have people going in to to to, to for, for various purposes as well. Um, so. so teaching English as a global language, developing instructional sequences, lesson adaptations, policies, and tests that make sense of GE and of curriculum innovations to suit their local context. Um, again, at this stage, I found that I realized that teachers can um, do this right after, or if they have their own initiative to do the assessments, they can try to do. They can try to incorporate more elements, and even we just say how you adapt to the, 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 the teaching materials and how you design the tests that is more, the test that is more um, global English is oriented or GE friendly. Yeah, even if they have this, uh, just, oh no, is it, they, should this have, they should have this kind of initiative right, right after they are given um, this initiative to teach, can they promote, incorporate GE elements? But as I just mentioned that many teachers, a large group of students, right, when they teach, they have to follow this um, 
of summative assessment, for example, they are told to teach the same content, the same material, yeah, during the semester. So they don't have this initiative. So it is not easy for them. So how about here, we need to look forward in the future. Um, teachers integrate G or L principles in lesson design and implementation that suits their own ELT context. Again, it's not an easy task for them. That's something for policymakers, um, for everyone who is involved in language learning, how can those, how can we develop this equitable multilingual education? I think translanguaging um, should also be given a position or we, we don't just translanguage uh, do whatever, right, without any purposes, but uh, translanguaging should be recognized as something powerful um, that I'm just researching. And I think there is something that how we incorporate GE and translanguaging into language teaching as well. Yeah, um, they are similar, but they are not the same, I would say. So here, the two concepts should be given um, a place. So here, language choice and language use from an ecological perspective. Okay, um, English as a global language, national language should also be incorporated. I think something important, that's why I put um, translanguaging is that local and minority languages should also, I, I don't know, I, I can't just say be promoted, but they should be given a place. It's not verbally whatsoever, at least it's cognitively, emotionally, psychologically, right? We have the linguistic diversity. Well, even we, even I'm now using English to give a lecture, to give a workshop whatsoever. Um, and even people are listening to a lecture in English. Probably it seems it's a monolingual one, but the whole process, right? Cognitively, psychologically, when how we process the language, how we process, how we understand, and how we challenge this, the content, right, of a lecture is very complex. So I think it is the local minority languages, various aspects, is 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 whole the communication is happening right now at the moment. Yeah. In in the, the more complex way than what we see, right? So I think the incorporation of um, global English and translanguaging should be promoted at least recognizes for um, equitable education, multilingual education. That's why I think even I'm teaching a group of Chinese, right? It seems that they, they share the same language, the first language, but the group of Chinese students, they have various linguistic resources, right? They have their, um, the, the, the dialects, okay? Um, various minority languages as well, they are learning other languages. So even it seems that this cohort is monolingual or even bilingual, but actually they have various linguistic resources, right? Even we teach international students, a group of people, they have different like multilingual resources. I think this idea um, can also be like um, incorporated into the teaching. So this is, um, the thematic review that I just mentioned. We published this um, on um, IELC Journal. If you're interested in, um, I can just share you a, a copy and any comments, feedback and criticism are welcomed. I just want to end this talk by quoting Rose and Galloway by advocating the inclusion of GLT in TISO practitioner education courses. We are not suggesting abolishing current content, but wish to encourage a critical examination of this through a global English lens. Okay, thank you very much. Perfect, thank you. That was extremely interesting. I think uh, quite a lot of us will agree. I just see here in the chat that Troy has had to leave, um, but hopes to catch up with you soon. Um, I think that we can take three or four questions if you have time, um, Gabriel, and then what I would like to request is that anyone else who has a question that we don't have time for, 
to maybe email it to us. I'll put the, the email in the chat again, and then we can forward it to you and post it on Elinet after. Is that okay? Yes, sure. Oh, I also yes yeah, see the chat box. Uh, I just put here Kamaloglu, uh, right? So, so yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Perfect. And um, Elif actually joined us um, just after her yeah. meeting. So <laughs> excellent. So if anyone has a question, I think you can go ahead and unmute yourself, and then we can take one or two off the floor. Uh, hi, Professor <clears throat> Dr. Fan Fan. Uh, it's a really, really interesting talk and thank you very much. Uh, I do have one question about, um, so you've mentioned that if you're based in different contexts, contexts, for example, if you have been abroad, probably that will lead you a higher level of acceptance of you know, accepting G as a concept. Um, but the reality is probably majority of English majors, especially in China, they have never had a chance of being abroad. So do you think yeah. Um, do you agree with the idea that they should be involved in G-aware teacher education project first, especially the one organized in a local context, before we move on to talk about what might influence their actual teaching um, practices? Because we do notice there is a gap between, you know, after attending the GE training and they go back to their own teaching, they probably will go back to original teaching method. But I think in, before we actually examine the practices, we probably need to focus on to raise their awareness first. Um, do you think you also agree with this idea? Thank you for the question. Um, I, I agree with you. Yeah, it, ideally, ideally, um, GLT or teacher training, global English is based on uh, where teacher training should be incorporated um, in, in, into um, the students first. But as you mentioned that um, students, they don't have this experience, at least my experience for me, right? How I developed this, um, the interest in global Englishes and I'm, I'm aware of global Englishes is, I think it's just after I started to, to study in the UK, right? Um, but for many of the students, as you mentioned, they don't have this opportunity to step them. To, 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 to go abroad or study abroad. So yes, for sure, they should be um, given these opportunities to attend this global English teacher training education. Um, I don't know whether who should go first, right? Whether they should go out to study abroad or they have to communicate with people or they should, have this global English's teacher training first. Um, I'm not sure, but I, I don't think there's, they should go first or second, but depend on the um, possibilities and depend on their own context. If in reality, yes, they cannot be offered or given this opportunity to go abroad. At the stage, yes, we need this global English's teacher training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thank but you. in the future, just right after that, right, if they have this opportunity to go abroad, they have this kind of stronger, I think, they have this stronger connection from their G training mm -hmm. experience to the overseas experience. Mm -hmm. I think this can be perfect as well, right? Yeah, 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 indeed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I also saw the message from Troy. Yeah, Matt Carnegie. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, we saw a hand okay. raising. Okay. Excuse me, can I ask questions? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Afan Gabriel Fang. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say a happy Dragon Ball Festival in China right now. <laughs> Thank it you. It was my pleasure to see you again uh, when we were like meeting in uh, the first time in Asia Tefal Teflin Conference in Yogyakarta, if you still remember, when you presented oh, the paper oh. inter, uh, entitled Intercultural Communication, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> and then the second oh, time, okay. Smart. okay, it was my blessed to see you again, although it was online now. <laughs> it is uh, now online, but previously it was offline. Okay, 
So yeah, yeah. Uh, my questions here is related to the teacher education. Uh, uh, you highlight some of the teacher education is in the uh, pre-service teacher. Uh, how about the in-service in teacher? I mean, like, is it possible for us to uh, like to inform the in-service teachers in the schools about global English principles? Because uh, sometimes the teachers feel like they are in the comfort zone with uh, their current like traditional teaching method, and then they are reluctant to change. If there is new idea, sometimes they are very hard to change. And I actually I have like a proposal or it's like research proposal on uh, like giving the teachers uh, in service teachers with uh, guilt informed uh, principles. And uh, I would like to give like thirty two word thirty two uh, words uh, thirty two hours of uh, guilt uh, informed uh, teaching practice, and then. I would like to uh, see whether uh, their uh, belief, as you mentioned, uh, change from uh, before and after the workshop, for example, like that. Was it possible? Uh, I'd like to ask for your opinion related to uh, my research proposal. And then uh, while they are also attending this uh, workshop, uh, I would like to also see whether they can uh, practice like uh, GIL principles in the classroom and then to see what is the, uh, the challenge and how how about the solutions dealing with the challenge in the classroom? And maybe they can write like some uh, reflective journals about their experience in implementing uh, the GALT principles. I'd like to uh, ask for your uh, suggestion and opinion about this one, uh, Professor. Thank you. Mm, sure, sure. Thank, thank you very much for the question. Um, I, I didn't really say that um, this teacher awareness should be only suitable for um, pre-service teachers, as you mentioned, right? It's mm -hmm. even more important for in-service teachers to be given such opportunities for this um, GLT, or if you pronounce it like GELT, uh, mm -hmm. GELT teacher training. Yeah, so the teachers may themselves be positioned in a comfort zone after certain years of teaching. Yeah, I think it's even more important um, and that's what you, you do, what you're doing, like um, providing the workshops for, for teachers, if we have this, um, yeah. So something um, is that if the teachers are required or asked to attend the workshop from your perspective, or if teachers just sign up more like um, voluntarily to do this. I think it also goes from the different story, right? If, if they are signed up, they're interested in this. Um, I think it's possible, yeah, if you're doing a 32 hours um, teacher training workshop, and it's good as you, you mentioned that you will also research. Um, I think if I predict, right, the teachers may have changed their beliefs. But again, it's more important to see how they bring these ideas um, into their own teaching contexts. Um, something, reflection is okay, interview is okay, but it will be more interesting if you can really observe, if you are allowed to do so, right? To observe their own teaching, if the GELT elements could be incorporated in their own teaching. Plus, with the interviews or reflection. Yeah, this type of longitudinal research, I think it's more important. Now we have many studies saying that teachers change their beliefs, students change their beliefs. They are more global English awareness. Okay, many, many studies has, uh, have already, already shown this, their attitude level. But I think we need some extension. Yeah, as you mentioned, how they incorporate those elements, aspects into their teaching. It would be good not to based on their self-reports because I also conducted an, another study based on the self-reported data from students' experience. But I think it's more now, it's, it's more necessary if we extend, if we go forward the field is that how and why teachers really teach GELT or incorporate this element in their teaching. I think it will be more interesting. Yeah, based on this proposal. I don't know if I answered the question. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. It, it helps me a lot, Professor. Thank you. 
And thank perhaps you, uh, I, I'd like to uh, ask another question if it's possible. Is it possible, Nadia? <laughs> Maybe it's a little bit out of the box. Yeah. Uh, I said, is, I think. Uh, as you I mentioned, think, that, I think one more question would be fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. As you mentioned, if that's that, okay. In, one more question. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, as you mentioned that in uh, uh, GELT uh, proposal, the, the last that you underlined with the uh, red line here, uh, the changing higher uh, teacher higher hiring practice, yeah, uh, Professor. And it's very interesting uh -huh. that, as you mentioned, uh, pre uh, probably uh, uh, in, the, in the previously, the teachers like are rehired based on their, uh, how well they teach English, but nowadays, is uh, how well they like publish and write uh, uh, in, in journals, for example. And this is very interesting. And I know that you publish a lot of journal articles in very good journals, Professor. And I just want to have like some tips maybe and trick and how to really write well and then uh, present it also well. And while you are also teaching in your university very well, how you organize these kind of things. Thank you very much, Professor. <laughs> Hope I can get the tips. Okay. Yeah. Th thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, at least yeah, in tertiary level, higher education, um, the teachers have another requirement that how they publish to keep the job. So I think at least in many, yeah, we 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 will will be assessed based on this. Um, probably in the future I can give another talk, but it's very difficult. Yeah, for just the tips. I think one thing is that keep reading. Yeah, so some journals, they have different requirements. Um, empirical data, how you collect data, I think this is the first stage. Yeah, how you have um, the rich data for the analysis. And then I think reading is very important. When I was doing my PhD in the UK, right? I don't know, many of us who have the experience. Um, I also, I was told that the first semester, even the first year, you just spend time reading, reading, reading. So after reading enough journal articles, you realize the academic writing format, the academic writing, the language as well. And then you, you collect data, you start your own research, keep writing, keep revising. Yeah, um, I think this is very general comments on publication, but more detailed is that you need to know the journal's requirements, different scope, different um, words, limits, different scope, et cetera, et cetera, that um, some journal may prefer certain yeah, uh, research methods or, or whatsoever. So that's another the story. And I think um, for novice researchers start with um, the first, uh, piece of research with your supervisor or with someone more experienced, at least he or she will guide you, right? When you have this, your piece of writing, he or she will know how to revise, how to just, um, you know, uh, the, the, the improve the quality to fit the, the, the journals you may want. So it's very general, but I think you need to keep going and have this experience and being rejected several times, then you learn the, <laughs> the, 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 the something the, the, yeah how you, how you really can publish so don't be afraid of rejection as well um, okay? <laughs> okay thank you very much for your motivation professor okay perfect thank you um gabriel i think that is our time for today i have just shared thank you screen. so much by the way ah. thank you so much for everything yes thanks elif mm -hmm. um Thank you for joining Thank us you. as well. Thank Listening you. to the full uh, online record, uh, hopefully when it is posted online. Thank you so much. Yes, soon. So I'm actually um, going to, we'll be working on it and then we will have the recording available online. I will let you know as well when it's ready. Um, but thank you once again for joining us, everyone. And I'm okay. going to stop the recording now. Let me just do that. And... Uh...